Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Um, today, I've watched, oh boy, <clears throat> I watched AMD's keynote and Intel's keynote from Computex 2019. And I've taken some notes and I'm going to bring up uh, some of the key aspects from both and go over the highlights from both because each one well AMD's is about an hour and 15 minutes and Intel's is just over an hour and um, there's just lots of things coming from AMD and a little worried for Intel but uh, We'll start with the uh, AMD side and then move into the Intel side. So let's get started. <laughs> yeah. Now the way AMD broke this up, they started with their high-end server data center CPUs moved to the graphics and then the PCs uh, and PCs in gaming. So we'll just touch a bit on the server side because that's a lot of Intel's bread and butter is, uh, is the data center high-end computing and AMD's going after that and Judging by what they're saying, if they're going to produce what they're saying, they're really going to be going after uh, Intel big time. So let's take a look at that real quick. We're very, very honored to be selected for probably one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging supercomputer in the world. AMD was selected by Oak Ridge National Laboratories and the U.S. Department of Energy, together with Cray, to build a one and a half exaflop supercomputer. That's huge. Again, that think about this. That is where Intel gets a lot of its cha-ching. I mean, it does on the desktop market, but it is really big in the server market. And AMD is now going after that, partnering with Craig Computers. Wow. That's one and a half exaflops. That's huge. It's using a future generation of AMD Epic, and it's using a future generation of our AMD Radeon Instinct. And the reason we love it is because we know it's going to be incredibly challenging. But our goal in 2021 is to have the world's fastest supercomputer on AMD technology. You're listening, Intel? Big processor, Rome. Rome is an incredible product. It's built on seven nanometer technology. It's up to 64 Zen 2 cores. It has incredible compute and IO and bandwidth capability because of the way we architected this device. And when you look at what that means, what we see in our labs and in our customers' labs I mean, is look we at see this. up two to times twice the performance, performance, up to two times two performance, performance per with socket PCIe compared 4, to our previous generation. Up to four times and on floating point workloads, the floating we see point up per to socket. 4x That's your because of the floating point capabilities that we put into ROM. Up to four times. Now, we're very, very That's excited where about you get how ROM is doing in the labs. And we want to show you some of how ROM is like doing here at Computex. So for this that, is let me invite Forrest Norris to the stage. Leap into that. Now we're going to jump ahead just a little bit. Hey Lisa, I'm going to showing you that this same simulation on two much ROM processing power outperforming that the top each processor line, can Lake, handle per day. Uh, processor, and if dual you look, socket from Intel just announced the a month ago, AMD and ROM is well in the dual over, socket to dual well socket over comparison half over twice as, as, fast, as fast on molecular it's, dynamic it's simulations. Twice as fast. It's 
twice Boris, as do you want to talk about what those nanoseconds the were? The graphics card part of the presentation. <laughs> you're still behind, but at what? least you're moving in the How right direction. How many of you direction. love Radeon? What we see is 1.25x performance per clock. Versus what? Though? And then 1.5 so the way to times think about performance this is that's watch architectural versus efficiency. What? Every You're clock still cycle you get more performance because of those compute engines and how we've optimized NVIDIA. the pipeline. And that is and then when you the put that together, both the architecture, the design capability, as well as the process technology, we're seeing I mean, 1.5x or higher performance per watt capability on the new Navi products as a result of our DNA. And if you can make if you can make a graphics card that so, is competitive you know with a 2080 it's time to meet as far as Navi performance products. or even so beats it at a better context, price i want to introduce the radeon rx then everybody would, would i mean more and people would RX jump on board but that's actually is named the graphics in honor card of section of amd so is 50? where they drop the ball is the year but that we start they are new learning, they're getting RDNA. better. So let me introduce you to um, the first Navi GPU. Now, the, you, they're gonna show us the, the chip, and guess what, it looks like every other graphics chip that I've seen. Seven nanometer architecture. Well, you RDNA, know, seven nanometer, that's great. RX if it performs better and some than you may whatever say, nanometer this that chip NVIDIA is small. doing, that they're getting much higher we clock like it speeds, small. much it's small, but it better has incredible graphics performance. performance in it. So you're going to see a so, lot I mean, it sounds like they have, these not you know, GPUs better technology, very, very soon. but they're just not getting the performance. Now, with that, we also it. want to show you not the And that's action. what so, they Scott, need come on back to, out here. to work on. Because if you have a graphics Hi, card, Hi, Scott. That so Scott uh, runs our Radeon gaming um, business unit, and I think Scott has the most fun job card. in the company. There's no doubt about it. I have the most fun uh, job in the company. My kids always say I just go to work and perform as well. So I, I, uh, I appreciate He actually does just go to work and game. Then the specs <laughs> don't matter much. <laughs> All right, Scott, what are we going to show our fans here? Yeah, hey, look, uh, but I'm we're going to take a look at to, uh, this benchmark. Show the world today. Now, like Navi I say, if this was a... And this is something that... And on behalf of all the AMD you know, engineers we, we uh, that have about, worked on the Navi product family, we're and super yeah, excited to get the, this in the, the hands of gamers the very, RX very soon. Five, so behind five you see that Chris over there has already started the benchmark running. This is Strength the RTX Brigade. It's running on two 70. GPUs. On your left not is the, the RTX 2080, 2070. Not the 2090. And on the right on the screen is our brand new Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs. Uh, Strange Brigade is a co-op third-person shooter game. It's designed to uh, play with your friends. You can uh, fight Minotaurs. Uh, fight some scorpions, so, you know, uh, yeah, also solve puzzles that. and blow stuff I mean, up. I mean, I, I give them kudos and I give them <laughs> credit. At least up. it and is. And then you can see as the benchmark uh, comes to a close here, you see the scores right behind me shortly. For um, AMD, so it is. Extremely proud Overall, of our engineering team. It's, it's You'll not see that on average, the it's, RX 5700 GPU it's, it's a little better beats than our competition by roughly 10% performance in the very early how it's edition of the game demo. If so it's I'm super excited about that. Thank you. At the same cost as a 2070 or cheaper, Scott then too much fun that games is all the going time, to swing. Scott, our fans people want to know this to is a Navi preview. And that this is a Navi preview. preview. So our fans but want to know when can they the get same their hands price. on Navi? Well, or it's higher. Be very soon. So we will be launching everywhere in the world. You know, if it's a, like a little bit more expensive than a 2070. And so I'm very excited for the performance for that. that you're gaining. Mm. NVIDIA's so maybe, uh, a little I'll also bigger tell everybody, if you want to learn more about name Navi, as far as graphics on the stream and here in the audience. Um, you can come now and now here this is pretty big news uh, from CEO. the chief operating officer <laughs> I know in Asus scientists. is <laughs> looking to bring out if yeah. I remember right it's like and, uh, 36 and a second, new I'd like to, uh, motherboards to AMD for your based on the uh, x570 chipset thank you very much now that is also to the of your going to dig launch. in thank you to thank you. Intel's Asus and AMD market share all has the in the PC market for because not only do you have Asus has um, more than 
five thousand engineers. Of, you know, you have to a, design a, the products. You're having higher end we are so motherboards proud to be the company as well as that can a huge variety a to choose from. Because generally, Intel's been the king. AMD. As far as Starting with the, the number of motherboards board, out there that support the their cards, architecture, the FreeSync monitors, and generally Intel-based systems the get the higher specifications for motherboards. This is going to take another big chunk out of the PC gaming market from and Intel. The exciting user experience outside. In April. We have launched the latest Ryzen CPU to our ultra slim gaming notebook. Yes. And today, we are going to introduce a new gaming desktop, the RG, RG Strix GL10 series, oh. also powered by AMD CPU. Do you want to talk about this? And we are very excited because it's one of, it will be one of the first systems are with the AM4 generation socket, AMD So Ryzen I could take CPU. the processor out of so this system, you, throw it in that motherboard. Thank you, Andy. I mean, and what's right, more, that motherboard would be designing kind of overpowered high for, the, CPU for the processor, but I think you get the idea. Problems. That's a 1700 and we that's are in this system right here that I'm Asus recording this could on. Be the one, um, maybe the only one. Overcome and the that's there may be an a few amazing here. thing <laughs> that you can take <laughs> Just a few. Uh, an older processor, put, her, put it into a newer motherboard, <laughs> and so to the today, reverse. You, uh, we the 3000 series, which is coming up, Asus is X570 based on the uh, AM4 processor. AM4 socket. Apart from so the it's still good. Design. If you have a motherboard that's AM4, Special you want to get a memory. brand new CPU? No a problem. Just buy one of the new ones, plunk it in. You have to. CPU. You have to update your BIOS first. Update your BIOS first. Thirty designs. But for customers. Pretty much, that's what you're going to be able to do. Now there is some exceptions. Uh, MSI has come out and said that their first generation Again, uh, AM4 for motherboards. Uh, they don't recommend the Let's third generation the uh, CPUs on year, their second generation which is what this one is uh, they do kind of condition so, let's start but together. we'll see Thank you, Joe. how that Thank turns you. out Thank because you. they Thank did so release uh, firmware for this uh, motherboard that does support Thank you the, the 3000 series so you can tell Ryzen a tremendous CPUs. Amount of excitement. and why is that important doubling the photo point in PC applications means you have faster performance in creative workloads for all of those content well, creators who want to do more. In math processing. We also doubled the cache size. Why did we double the cache size? Because access to memory is so important. And we believed that the fastest memory if you reduce the, the memory latencies, that you get much, much in better performance, socket, particularly you know, in games. Uh, and how RAM. gaming performance works. It's the memory and or then the cache that the most is built into the processor is Gen the fastest memory is the IPC in a system. Or the instructions per clock. Absolutely. So we built two systems on your left, a PCI now Here's where Gen the rubber system, meets the road. And on your right, exclusively you have the from top AMD, of the line. A PCI Gen 4 system. And Top this of is the line the upcoming 3D Intel Mark PCI processor Express feature test, which is designed to answer the question the, how much extra not the top of the performance line, can you get AMD from processor. PCI Gen 4 versus Gen 3? And the answer is clear and it's large. Up to and 69 percent more performance for graphics from having PCI it's Gen 4. Which you can and that's that even with the 2080 AMD. Ti Let's take a look at that NVIDIA. Band NVIDIA. So we're running oh, about coming. 25 frames per second on the AMD system and about 14 frames per second on the, the Intel system. And this is just a really great demonstration of what Gen 4 can do for gamers. That's and you think the, about how that that's might help where the, the cache, Fantastic. Robert, the thank you so much. Thank you so much. floating port calculations come in, and that's how it improves overall so when you take gameplay, a look at frames per second, things like family, that. And what, what we're seeing with the 3700X is... Now, if you look here, you got um, the Ryzen 7 2700X versus the 3700X. 15% better single core workload. Multi-threaded, 18%. 105 watts draw 
down to 65 watts. So you're getting much better performance and you lose using a lot less power to do it. Somebody needs to, to tell uh, AMD they need to send me a 3700X processor. Now this is, this part is where I kind of, uh, I, I like doing three-dimensional graphics and animation, so I'll stay a little quiet for this part. The third gen in action. So Robert, come on out and help me demonstrate 3700X. I can do that. Hey. All right, Robert, what are we gonna show? So we've got Cinebench R20 running, and I was thinking back to my time as a reviewer, looking at AMD's K7 and K8 architectures, long time ago. And we've used Cinebench for over 15 years to reliably and quickly test the performance of a processor. And now we're on Cinebench R20, which came out just last month. And what you'll see on your right is Look at the Ryzen 7 3700K versus on the left, I7, the Core i7 9700K. And as we turn Ryzen through this 7, realistic ray trace scene, it you may notice that the Ryzen 7 3700X is Look, uh, quite a bit faster. It. In fact, it's about one third faster than the competing part. And that's really a testament to the processor. compute performance of Zen 2 and the density that the 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture brings to a chip. Fantastic. And uh, it, it's just a monster performance. And I think if and content this is creators a consumer really, really level want something special, desktop it's just 65 processor. watts, this that's is a beautiful, what this beautiful part. Processor is aimed at. Still going. And uh, it's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we'll just $330 is expected to retail for when it's released. I mean, that's, not, that's expensive, done? but I mean, that's... Almost there. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Okay. It takes a little while. All right, there All we right. are. All right. Robert, thank that's you so much. Thank you. Amazing thank you. for a consumer-level desktop processor. So look, you get an idea of how much capability you have. Again, against our competitor, what we see is single and I mean, performance, they're going, single they keep referring to about their equal, competitor. We all know who their competitor is. Multi-threaded performance, all but at 65 watts. When I watch with lower the um, the Intel, they act like they're still the only game in town. So we hey, love 3700X, you need to but you know start we love competing because these people are so here. So let me introduce you to the next member of the Ryzen 7 family. The Ryzen 7 3800X. The 3800X is now nah, on the, other hand, the eighth have core AMD device send me one for the enthusiast gamer. The boost clock goes up to 4.5 gigahertz, 36 megabytes of total cache, and you see this is now a at 105 watts. 105 watt and when TDP we think anyway, about the 3800X, so. we really think about it as the eight core performance leader. So take a look at the improvements. Ryzen was always an incredible processor, but when you I mean, look that at the gaming improvements does, that we've been able much better to than, get like you said, with third I have gen Ryzen, you can just look generationally. These are some of the most popular esports titles, and things thing like I League of Legends, really like, Dota, PUBG. I'm pause this. And you I really do like in the way AMD gave their presentation is a lot of it gave you a lot of good information as far as what they're comparing this to. Whereas when we go into the Intel presentation, they're like, they don't do that. They're um, rising AMD 9. is pushing gaming beyond eight cores. And today I With am still so being proud an to introduce socket. the new AMD Ryzen 9 family. I don't find so, it ironic the that they call time, it uh, three, five, seven, AMD and nine, nine. Same way Intel is did. Is this beautiful or what? No, it's just a. It's when a I chip showed this at CES, on many on the internet wondered because I had one core chiplet, whether we had room for the second core chiplet. <laughs> and the answer is, we absolutely have room. And this enables us to bring so, Ryzen 9. I love silicon. It's what pays your but salary, I'm sure you do. And showing products off. So let me talk about Ryzen 9. 
The Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core, 24 is the threads, 3.8 base, 4.6 gigahertz processor speed. With 12 cores and 24 threads. And wow. what you see that's so special here no, is this I is the no AMD, compromise please. product. Send we have 4.6 gigahertz send boost. I'll send it back. 70 I'll even megabytes pay to send of total it back. cash. Let me just and have it's one all for about in a month. 105 watts. And when we say no compromise, we mean that it is a phenomenal multi-threaded CPU, but it's a phenomenal gaming CPU as well. So with that, let me invite Robert back to 105 watts. But look at these figures you have versus a 9920X in single threaded, Ryzen 9 beats it, multi-threaded, still beat in wattage much less power 60 watts less power you can run a 60 watt bulb and your computer and that's the equivalent to what your pc is pulling with a uh, intel now you say well george you're just bashing on intel wait till we go over what intel uh showed at computex now, this is a tech show, okay? This is, we want to know what you're coming out with. We want to know what the specifications are. We want to know what you're doing. And you'll understand why I'm kind of going hard on Intel. It isn't because I'm an AMD particularly uh, fanboy. I have three systems that are AMD. I probably have five systems that are Intel, if not more. But it's like Intel, you have a competitor. They're out there. Okay? It's called AMD. And if you keep sitting on your laurels and not putting out evolutionary, if not revolutionary things and start competing, you're going to end up in the spot where they were and AMD up until the Ryzen I mean they put out some really good chips but within the last uh, before Ryzen uh, about the last four or five years the chips were not their chips are what Intel is doing now in that four to five year span and then, then Intel started sitting on their laurels. And now, AMD, look at these prices. Look at this. The 3700X, $320. I have this as possible. The so this will retail for $399. $400. And that's retail. Let alone getting in on sale. You, know, you wait a little bit, it'll be on sale. And finally, the Ryzen 9 family. We love this guy. We love this guy because we love that we can bring something to the market that nobody has ever done before. In 12 cores, 24 threads, you saw Robert, we in compared cores, against our competition whose device CPU. is more than $1,100. But we believe that we want as many people as possible to have the Ryzen 9 3900X so when this goes on sale, it will retail for $499. That is an amazing price. That's for half the, the price. That's half the price of our competition with much, much more performance. Are you listening, Intel? I don't think you are. Now, as I said, you can say I'm being critical of Intel and I am if I didn't care about Intel at all I'd be like AMD AMD there's no such thing as Intel well tell you what if a I mean four ninety nine five hundred dollars for a 12 core 24 thread CPU that I can pop into my computer's motherboard 
and it will work that is an amazing performing CPU that I'll, I'll give you an example uh, a friend of mine and I do a show called uh, Anything Goes every Thursday at about 7.30. Uh, I made a new intro for it. And it's 3, 3D. I used three systems, including this one. This one, which is the 1700. I, I have a, a server system, which is about 10 years old. But it's two Xeon processors at uh, about 3 gigahertz. They're 5775, 5875, 56, no, they're 5675s, running at about 3 gigahertz, a little higher. Uh, 24 cores, 20, or 12 cores, 24 threads, and my Ryzen 8 core 16 thread system. It took all three systems eight days to render. Okay, that's a very, of course, it's a very long time for a uh, 1250 frame 3D animation. But if I had one of these processors, you know, upstairs, that might have been seven days, not eight. Would have still blown the doors off the server, which is uh, 12. 12 core 24 thread but that's about eight nine year old technology but that's also coming from the enterprise or the server realm these are desktop systems that anybody can have now now we're going to shift over to the intel keynote 71 was a unique time in history. It was a time when people were coming together in a lot of new ways. They were sharing ideas. They were creating technology and innovation. And, you know, it really changed our everyday lives. 1971? Uh, you know, for example, rock musicians, everyone knows I love music. Rock musicians came together in 1971. A genre that really delivered more monumental... Okay, for those of us that were alive in 1971, there weren't huge leaps in technology that you're... I mean, yeah, as far as musicians with sound and things like that, because things were moving more towards with sound effects, stuff like that. But that's not what you're doing here. You're a chip manufacturer. Mental albums and songs in that year, more than any year before or any year since. It was a time when some great engineers and animators came together in Lake Bay, Florida to create Disney World, right? Which is still the most visited attraction and resort in the world today. What does that have to do with CPUs? What does that have to do with CPUs? The 4004 microprocessor. Ooh. <laughs> oh. This is the first commercially available microprocessor ever created. Okay, so it's the 4004 was the first in a long line of Intel microprocessors that were really kind of at the heart and then he of just computing sticks it breakthroughs into his now pocket. for about the last five decades. So you probably ask, what, is that, what do those all have in common? Well, I really believe when people, when ideas, when innovations come together, perspectives change, innovations happen, they're unlocked, and powerful things, uh, okay, powerful things can happen. Your that's why I'm so excited to be we back again this year at Computex. AMD's you know, we've been here coming together now, here now I for years, see your creating the future. Innovations. And I have the privilege to talk to you again about now at Intel, I'm, we're committed to changing that. We want to put a new era of, and a new type of computing power and intelligence in the hands of people and businesses everywhere. Okay, and we so believe we can how do are that. you going to do that? Not on our own, but with all of you working together. 
We have some tremendous partnerships, including 12 million Intel architecture developers. Uh, okay, so what chips are, going, are you going to bring out but for it? We know there's more to do. In total today, we're launching 14 new high-performance desktop and mobile SKUs specifically designed and purpose-built for business including for the first time ever a core i9 for vpro wanted to show off okay to so you're talking to us you, about the, the data center now again you have about all the and then you're showing us a laptop those, um, ninth gen um, processors but you also have on the dell this extremely thin bezel so you have the biggest possible laptop in the smallest form factor possible that's right. You got great performance now in these consumer-like, very sleek form factors, which is awesome. Exactly. Now, so what are you bringing to the data center? One. For those who want um, VPro in an all-in-one, you have this one here. But an all-in-one pop-up camera. So you have the ability to have uh, with a pop-up camera, camera all in right. one, all-in-one. Very good. And last okay. but not least, I'd like to show you this. Next is the part. Okay. Xeon E. This says. So this, this line of Xeon E processors really brings professional grade performance for faster rendering, ray tracing, and design. And for the first time ever inside of this lineup, we're going to eight cores and 16 threads, five gigahertz of single core turbo frequency, and support for 802.11ax, now called Wi-Fi. Mm. Eight core, 16 thread, one core, five gigahertz. Okay, so we're going to talk about creators now. What? So let's find out what processors you have for creators in category i wanted to invite my next guest out someone you all know locally please join me in welcoming the chairman and ceo of acer jason chen hey hey is this an intel keynote or is it a dell and an acer keynote I'm skipping. So, it. what do you have for creators? Use a uh, top line uh, Intel platform, storage, uh, uh, CPU, and everything else. And this baby is a powerhouse. <laughs> this baby is a powerhouse. It used laptops. Okay. Laptops aren't a powerhouse. Here's a problem when you put a high-end processor into a laptop. You run into a problem because, one, these processors pull a lot of power, and they also produce a lot of heat. And in a small form factor, like a laptop, it has a difficult time evacuating that heat so the processors thermal throttle if you want examples of that look at apple next part oh well wait we have uh, the x series of intel chips let's Sisters. see what they say really about it all around delivering Coming this the compute fall. intense performance that these creators demand in new, powerful, quiet, and accurate ways. And GB this time is music Where to my ears guy. and music to the creator ears. Thank you very much. Uh -oh. Thank you. We'd <laughs> love to hear that. Thank you. And I think, you know, the, and the whole thing there, so you can, just a little more detail, you can expect us to increase the memory, the CPU frequency. We're going to take our, our Intel Turbo Max technology beyond two cores and go even farther. We're excited to do that. We're going to obviously deliver that to you, and I can't wait to see the CPU kind of graphics. Product. Well, Next here part. we have the box. They were able to special ship me a brand new system that has that X series processor already in it. Chuck, how the heck did they do that? Oh, very fast, okay. Very quickly, FedEx. Oh, that's very good. Are these <laughs> uh, Intel computers? I'd like to show you. This is the Asus Zen book. Now this is. Now this has two screens. That, now two screens allows just, you to the, do the thing all is, the tasks is, you normally do. Here I have a video edit. The thing about this is, I want I want to know about your check. 
and tell. What are you coming out with? What are you coming up with? All you're telling me is what Dell's coming up with, Ace is coming up with, and these other vendors. Okay, it's uh, a Nintendo game, or what is that with the, the two screens, of a laptop. You have, you're showing a desktop with a Xeon processor in it. Oh, they're your toughest workloads. Well, what's the specs on that? Hmm? Nothing. Next part. She also did the amazing opening that you heard while you were all walking in today. So what do you have to show us today? What are you working on? Uh, well, GB, I use lots of technology to you know, enhance the music I make with my voice and guitar and piano. But as you know, my PC, this Lenovo all-in-one, is my main instrument. That's right. And I think you know, whether you're... Now, we're wanting to know about, I mean, Intel makes CPUs, right? So far, we're talking mostly about other products other than a CPU, okay? AMD is talking about its 7 nanometer process, you know, chips you're still having 10 nanometer you're not giving us any specifications you're not telling us what's coming up and is what's going to be new now you're going to show us how this lady can make a song and play it in real time well guess what that's nothing new and then uh, hopefully, I could play just a small snippet of this. Brings this other kid out, which is fine. It's all fine. And... Okay, that, vi that audio quality is somewhere between AM and FM radio. FM radio sounds better. Next. Okay, President Client Solutions Group, again. Next. Popular broadcasters on Twitch, on stage, Dr. Lupo. Yeah. Okay, a streamer. Hey, great to see you. Gentlemen, hey thank you there. very much for having me. And I know it's it. Ben, can I call you Ben you for today? You call me whatever you need to, I, I, <laughs> no big deal to me. Okay, so I know you had, uh, you know, you got an advanced look, a first look at the Alienware. Uh... Okay, I'm really going to not, I'm going to really blow the lid off of something. Streaming on Twitch, okay. If you get 1080 by 60, is not very taxing on a system. I've streamed many a time. 1080, 60, it takes about 5% of the processor. Five. At least my processor upstairs takes about 5% of it. And then the other part is the game, which only takes up two cores, maybe. Oh, you can stream and game on a laptop. Now, but wait, the game that he's going to stream. Oh, this just gets. Fortnite is not a hugely taxing game. Why? You know, I figured maybe he'd show, like, um, you know, a hugely uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. That's pretty taxing onto a, a computer. Fortnite isn't. Streaming Fortnite is not extremely taxing on a computer. 
And guess what, Intel? You don't need a Core i9 to stream Fortnite. What you're seeing here is normally you stream into an environment, it's just the game and you, right? I'm gonna put you into a virtual studio so you can actually do so much more. So what you're seeing, folks, this is new tech's new virtual studio called <laughs> Holoset. It allows streamers to choose from a number of different studio environments where you can employ and surround yourself with numerous different monitors. That's software. And you don't need an i9, 90, Core i9, 9900KS. S is special. But did we get any specifications on this? Uh, you know, what's new about it? Uh, not really. It's just called a, a 9900K S is special. Next part. All available in Q4. So, of course, we're not going to stop there in an effort to help more gamers in the community get the absolute most performance they can. Now, this the is product. actually. I'm excited to launch this one is more actually thing today, cool. which is our Intel Performance Maximizer. And that's available free next month, starting in June, or just this next month. This is an intelligent and automated overclocking tool that actually helps you custom tune in an easy way your system for overclocking performance based on the processors like DNA, how it's made. So Chuck, I know you wanted to talk and kind of show people a little bit about how it works, right? Absolutely, so many people buy our case use because they want the best processor possible, right? And they're all overclockable, but overclocking- This is, is actually yeah. really cool. So, We've actually made the IPM, the Intel Performance Maximizer tool to take away all that intimidation. You hit a couple clicks and the software program goes in and actually looks at the DNA of the processor. It examines every core in your system to find out the maximum throughput or the maximum frequency. So we got a little animation here which shows you what's just happening. Every core is being tested. It's being, go, it goes through every frequency. We go through multiple voltages and it tests the entire processor to find out what that maximum frequency is. Now we, audit, we animated the utility today, obviously. This is something that normally it's actually a very manual process. You have to sit there and try it over and over and over this again. This is actually wicked yourself. cool. Exactly. Because this thing now, now is automated. You can. If you want to overclock your CPU, it's an automated thing. You don't have to go into BIOS and change the settings and then find out how, you know, find out if it's going to work. Is it going to crash? If you put a load on it, it crashes. This is something that is really cool. But guess what? It's software. AMD can do this. I wish they would. That would be really cool for AMD to do. But AMD can, it, it's a program that Intel came up with. Start it, walk away, and come back, and it'll figure out the, the highest that you can get, you can go to get the most performance possible. Exactly, now this is the Again, 9700 system. Cool. This is a couple clicks down Project from Athena. Now, Project Athena is a program we first talked about at for CES laptops. in January. And it's unique in that it's based on years and years of detailed research of understanding deeply what highly mobile users, mobile. Intel, you make CPUs. You don't make laptops. You don't make this. You don't make that. You make laptops. Or you don't make laptops. You make CPUs. If you want to put out a guideline, fine. Put it out. Help them with it. But this is something that you don't make. You are a chip manufacturer, a CPU manufacturer. You don't make laptops. Okay, I get performance and responsiveness, connectivity, artificial intelligence, all day battery life, instant action. That deals with performance, doesn't it? Form factor, a desktop form factor. I expect to be a powerhouse. I don't expect a laptop to have the same performance as this. Why? Because you run into thermal issues. And guess what? AMD 7 nanometer produces less heat. 
So it would be more apt and in depth to be able to be put into a laptop. And guess what? Pleased to announce the release of the Athena specification 1.0, the 1.0 spec uh, today here in Taipei. So you came up with the specifications for everybody else to come up to to adhere to. Okay. Now this spec includes an initial set of expectations that address some of those foundational needs, including the need for amazing performance and responsiveness, instant action, different types of form factors, connectivity, battery life, and of course, AI. Doesn't and that have to do really with the CPU? What's really unique is for the first time collectively, we've all come together with okay, our partners part. to take a mid the Okay, right. hey, here we go. Now we're gonna talk about yeah. your well, processors. Everyone has been bringing right? something cool to show. Yeah. So I brought you an Ice Lake wafer oh. right out of our fab in Israel. Wow. <laughs> Straight from the fab. <laughs> Wow, that's really neat. And I, you know, I, this is actually very exciting and very cool. I, I'm, uh, it's just amazing to be here today, and I'm really I've pleased now today before, to launch our brand on. new 10th generation core Ice Lake processors. It's our most integrated SOC we've ever built, and also the first one that really brings AI at scale into the PC ecosystem. And uh, yeah. well, I think you have some other news too to share. Yeah, GB. Yeah. I'm even more excited to tell you, yeah. we are in production and now shipping. Wow. That's right. In production and shipping to customers, which is exciting. Hey, so, um, you know, our 10th generation core processors are designed with that mobile uh, demanding user in mind. It is uncompromising on all vectors, not just one. And today we're announcing 11 new 10 nanometer Ice Lake volume SKUs from Core i3 all the way up to Core i7. And Uri, maybe you could give folks just a feel for what's inside of this new yeah, SOC. Yeah, I would love to. With Ice Lake users, we'll experience our first PC with instructions for AI, a new CPU core architecture, a new Gen 11 graphics engine, and first time integrated Wi-Fi 6. In a laptop. Um, and on top of that, I wanted to uh, also say, on top of the systems that you just saw, the one from Johnson from Lenovo, we have another couple of examples on stage here with me today. More laptops. With, okay, right. now this is... With some incredible performance on our Gen 11 graphics in these new systems. So first one I'd like to show you is, we call it the Renz demo. The artist was named Renz. Now, what you see here on this system, this looks like a video but it's not. Ren's actually Yeah, I know it's not a video. I can tell that's not a video. environment that we can actually walk through. So let me show you what that's like, just like any Unreal Engine um, solution. We can walk through it, but you saw the incredible detail in that world, right? That's really made possible by using some of the unique characteristics built into the Gen 11 graphics to deliver the nah, Okay. <clears throat> Intel. Streamers, game streamers, don't stream from laptops. You stream from desktops. You can sit down. You can be comfortable. You could have a big monitor. Even a 17 inch laptop is not a big, the, the monitor that this camera is sitting on is 22 okay. inches. On the right hand side is Super Res. On the left hand side is the standard, standard bilinear playback. So Intel? TVs have been doing this for a while now. It's called upscaling. And it works okay. Because it tries to predict what it should look like. And if you want to see it, look at a uh, high-end Samsung TV. Because uh, they have upscaling. Uh, generally, it takes uh, 1080 and brings it into 4K or 8K. So take a look first at this tree. Notice how it's kind of fuzzy, but when we move to Super Res, it understands what a tree is supposed to look like, and all of a sudden those branches pop out before they're all blurry. So this is, this is using AI and the instructions to actually fix the resolution. Exactly. Live. And a, it's, yeah. It's a, yeah. And it's a video. It's a video, yeah. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you again your still face. from the video. Much, much clearer. So let's go ahead and start that again. We'll play that video. Here's okay. one other section I'd like to show you. Take a look at the take a look at the fence. 
And on the now, left if you look of the, the standard fence, playback, look how blurry it is, but known as we go to super res, okay. it becomes much, much now, sharper. The people in the, the middle, we get to the faces. The again, people in the middle much, here much sharper off super res. So again, look pretty much the same. That AI technology. No, that's awesome, and I and I think Chuck, it doesn't. You know, we don't have to just stop at videos for these that's guys. That's why I didn't show very long with it. So you AI have a program that, that is going to do the same processor. thing. This happens much much faster than would typically use another solution. And let, take a look how much clearer you look at. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Take a look at one. Your hair and your face is much. Okay, look at this part. Look at her face here. Yes, it is a little sharper. Look at her teeth. They're not much different. The glossiness here is less defined or it's more defined here. And again, that's upscaling. Here, they give a little bit better detail in his teeth. A little bit better here, but as far as this is being so much better than this. Yeah, they're both pixelated. There's some enhancements. Yes, there's some enhancements there. Is it revolutionary or evolutionary? No. As I just said a little bit ago, TVs have been doing this for a while now. It's called upscaling. Using an application, using AI like to track like your movements. Um, haven't you had that computer. since so the Xbox no 360 cameras, okay. with no the Kinex? No special Alex, lenses from let me skip ahead. Out again, those okay. Suits, and it knows if you're look at what's going on. I mean, so yeah, far. it's his groin job, area. Okay, but job. look at these. Yeah, his hips aren't moving. His chest isn't moving. So again, that's all made possible with Why the is this all moving? Shoddily. Right here, it's oh. waste, well, that's awesome. and it's like all <laughs> over the place. Can I stay here? You're so focused. <laughs> um, Look how focused he is. I know, These guys like, are <laughs> you want to just stay out and rip out of the team? Again, yeah. hasn't right. Xbox, Xbox had this for this like when with you can't the with you when you're on the road. Since what, the Xbox 360? Okay, give those back to him. So hey, with that, I really appreciate you guys spending time with the Ice Lake Systems and giving us all the I can connect to my PC. And also, obviously, as a sponsor of the Olympics, we look forward to watching so, your next journey. part you it's almost done what did you cover in the last hour you covered for dell asus and acer shut us laptops a few desktops what you make cpus To say that I'm disappointed is, uh, I mean, it's just an understatement. It's just, AMD says, this is what we're doing. This is what we're coming out with. This is how we compare to our competition. This is why you should choose us. What'd you do, Intel? Why should I buy something with your chip in it? That I can do blurring. And a camera, well, guess what? I can change settings on this camera and blur this background. I'm not going to do that on a laptop camera because they don't compare to this camera. Yeah, I can take this camera, plug it in the laptop. Guess what? It's still going to blur the background. In a picture. Yes, there are many tools out there to sharpen a picture, even upscale. But upscaling isn't anything new either. And if you've put that into your chipset, which is what I'm guessing you're saying, okay, that's not... anything that can't be done in software. So you put it at a hardware level. And upscaling doesn't give you detail that isn't there. It guesses. Sometimes it guesses wrong. In fact, a lot of the times it guesses wrong. And then, how do you update that? You have to do a whole firmware update on the chip to update that?
And some of you might think I'm being dramatic. And no, it's it's just pure frustration. Um, I, I learned more about Dell and Acer and Asus out of the Intel keynote speech than I did anything about Intel. As far as being a content creator, I've been into video and graphics and animation since a Commodore Amiga 1000 was the first computer that made that stuff possible. Well, all I can say is, their winner is AMD. Intel. <sighs> I hopefully this was entertaining for you, for everybody, because it, it was just been a it was Intel's show, and they didn't really, they didn't say what they're doing. Just saying one innovation that everybody else is doing, um, as far as real-time uh, music, you could, I could do that, and it doesn't require an Intel chip. Uh, sharpening an image, blurring a, this and that, I can do that without an Intel CPU. AI. AI. How does that help? Well, it's it's in the it's in the hardware. Intel AMD is taking you to lunch. Actually, I shouldn't say that. And uh, AMD is taking your lunch, Intel. And what are you going to do about it? 10 nanometer. New specifications that you expect your laptop creators to adhere to. And show me a bunch of laptops, a few desktops, and an all-in-one. It's time to step up your game, Intel. You have a competitor. It's AMD. They make CPUs just like you do. Except now they're eating your lunch. And based on what I saw here, you've got nothing. That program for overclocking, that's great, but guess what? I'm not going to overclock this all the time. I mean, this is an AMD, but you understand my point. I'm not going to overclock this system all the time because you run. it's going to run hotter. And it's going to burn out the processor. And if it does it all the time... I mean, that's great if I'm rendering. That, that that would be an awesome application for AMD to come out with. Uh, but that's an application. AMD can do that. See you guys in the next one.